So when I was at my best friend's house, I spotted these drawers and they were in a corner and they'd never really done anything with them. And I asked if I could take them away, give them a bit of a makeover and surprise her and her husband with the finished result. So it's a little two drawer unit. It's pretty bashed, um, pretty battered. It lives at their front door and they just use it for storage and things. Um, but it fits perfectly in this, this sort of doorway near their front door. So. Uh, it's basically got um, tapered legs, a little cross beam, then it's got this kind of um, fake uh, veneer along the bottom, two drawers with these um, little handles which I'm going to replace, and a wooden top which is quite scratched and battered, and inside just kind of chipboardy drawers. So one of the first things I'm going to do is give the whole thing clean because uh, it's a little bit um, dusty in places. I do want to try and keep areas wood but they are quite damaged. I'm going to sand the whole thing. I'm going to sand the whole thing back. I'm going to take all that varnish off, sand it right right down to its, um, yeah, to get all this sort of horrid orangey varnish off and see what um, the unit is like underneath. Um, uh, it's just a it's not necessarily like proper real solid wood um, in places, but I'm hoping that this should come up. Okay, so that's going to be my first job. And I think then once I've sanded it, I'm going to know whether I'm going to be able to air leave areas of it. Wood, if the wood's nice, or if it's going to have to be solidly painted the whole thing. But one thing I definitely know is that I'm going to change the handles. And I have actually bought some new handles already. So even though these are quite cute, these little handles, they are quite tarnished. Um, so I have bought some simple gold handles off Amazon. These simple gold, um, brushed gold knobs. So I've got four of them. Um, I'll link those in the description box because they were a bargain. I think they're about £12, no £10 I think for four. But one of the important things is that obviously those handles go in through one hole and these handles actually have two holes so one of the other things i'm going to do when i sand the whole unit is take the handles off sand the drawers drill the new holes um because i don't think i'm going to reuse that hole there or maybe i will maybe i will use these two inner holes on each drawer and so i'll just filler this outer hole because then at least i know that they're actually all lined up so that'll mean the handles are just that little bit further in um, but the only thing is then they won't be centre to the legs, which I think would look neatest. So no, I am going to filler and drill completely new holes. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm going to need to do a really good filler job and really sand those back and make them beautiful and flush. So when I paint the drawers, you're not going to see um, the holes. So that's going to be the first job. Give it a clean, give it a sand, drill the new drawer holes. So I just gave it a very light clean down with some um, soapy water and let it dry and then I went in with my sander. So uh, on certain areas like the top and the sides, I'm using my Bosch Orbital Sander with a really, really fine grade of sandpaper because this is literally just a veneer, wood veneer. You wanna be careful not to take too much off or go too deep because otherwise you're just gonna come through to chipboard. So very fine sandpaper, did sort of one pass across the top and the sides. And then I also have a smaller detail sander, which I'm gonna use on the edges and the slightly harder to reach areas. Sanding is always one of the biggest jobs, but it is worth doing it well. Now the paint that I'm actually going to use, you don't need to sand before you apply it, but as I said, I chose to sand the whole unit, see what I ended up with, and then I could make a decision about where I was going to paint and where I was hopefully going to leave wood showing. Certain hard to reach areas I also did with a sanding pad by hand, one that's flexible so you can get right into those corners, as well as using the little detail tool on my detail sander.
next thing to do was to remove the two handles. I have put them to one side and kept them, possibly might try and respray them for another project. So I'm going to remove those and then I'm going to drill my new holes for my handles and fill up the existing holes. First thing I need to do is measure really accurately so I get my holes nice and central. And then I'm just using some all-purpose wood filler and I'm putting plenty in there on the outside and the inside and then I'm obviously going to sand that right back and make sure it's nice and smooth and level. While the drawers are drying I go back to sanding a little bit more. One thing to bear in mind is once you've taken that varnish off the outside the wood then is open and prone to marks and staining from your fingers, grease from your fingers or any paint or anything like that. So do be careful with your unit once you've taken that varnish off, you don't want to mark it after doing such a lovely job. Then I sanded down the front of my drawers including all that filler using my orbital sander again. Both drawers the same and all the edges using my detail sander. I sanded the inside of the drawers a little bit but I am actually going to paint the inside and I'm going to be lining them with wallpaper as well so I just did this roughly with some hand sandpaper. The next thing I did was clean all that sanding dust off because you don't want all of that to get stuck in your paint. I just do this with a dry cloth, you can also hoover out the drawers and the unit and thing just to get rid of every last bit of sanding dust. And then I got to one of the coolest bits and that is marking out the design with my masking tape. I decided to create a triangle design on the front. I'm going to paint outside of the triangle and the inside of the triangle is going to remain wood. So to make sure that this triangle design lines up, I'm obviously drawing it out with the drawers in the unit. So I've measured, found the centre and then I sort of know approximately where I wanted the triangle to finish. So I've made that mark and then I'm marking it out with masking tape. Once I've got my design where I want it, I'm then going to slice the masking tape so that I can pull the drawers out and I'll be painting them out of the unit. I also know that I'm going to leave the top wood coloured, so I'm actually going to mask off the whole way around the top so I don't get any paint on it when I'm painting the sides. I actually wanted a very specific pink colour to match the wallpaper that I'm going to line the inside of the drawers with. So I spent a long time mixing up colours using a couple of types of paint, one Annie Sloan paint and some Dulux paint which had a sort of more purpley tone to it. So you can mix up your own colour, test it on a bit of wood, let it fully dry to make sure it's the shade that you want and also make sure that you mix up enough to paint your entire thing. The last thing you want to do is to run out of paint halfway through and then you can't mix up exactly the same colour. Better to have too much than not enough. My mixture was a mix of Annie Sloan paint which is a chalk paint which can be painted directly onto furniture and some Dulux paint which is also a chalk based emulsion so it meant I didn't need to prime the unit, I could literally paint this colour straight on and it was the perfect kind of darkish, slightly purpley toned pink. So I'm giving the inside of the unit a paint, even though you're not really going to see in there. I want it to be a really, really good job. I want it to be really neat and really professional. So the whole inside is getting a coat of paint. The one area I'm not going to paint is the top of the drawer runners. I do find that if you paint drawer runners and the sides of your drawers, it can make them really hard to run in and out smoothly. So I'm leaving the top of the drawer runner plain wood in order to ease the drawer continuing to be smooth. Some I painted with a brush, especially if it was tight little corners, and some I painted with a foam roller. The key to painting furniture is really, really nice thin coats so that you don't get any drips, you don't get any bubbles or bumpy bits. You want it to be really beautiful and smooth and the foam roller does do this really, really well, but things like the legs, you have to paint with a little brush. I also am actually going to sand in between every coat because I really do want this paint finish to be so smooth and so beautiful and it's just worth spending that extra bit of time on it in order to make it perfect. 
Total number of coats is probably gonna be two. I think it's got really good coverage, this paint. On the sides, I may do a third just to make sure they're absolutely perfect. And on the back, I did just do one coat of paint, but it was a slightly darker color of paint. I'm actually gonna line the drawers with wallpaper, so I only need to paint the sides and the back and the front. I've actually masked off the top edges because I want these to stay as wood and the sides of the drawer are also staying as wood because as I said, I want them to move in and out of the unit nice and smooth and they don't need to be painted. I'm going for that wood versus painted contrast so I think it'll work within the whole design. I'm giving the legs a little sand down with a little flexible sanding pad before I give them a second coat. I'm actually going to do a gold dipped leg effect on the legs, um, which I think is going to add a little bit of a zhuzh to the whole unit. So the legs don't necessarily have to be perfect uh, down at the bottom because it's going to get covered up with gold, but I want them to be nice and smooth so I gave them a sand in between coats. Oh, then came the fun bit, putting the paint on the sides. It's always my favourite bit to put the paint on the uh, biggest, flattest surface. Did this with a foam roller. You do get the tiniest, weeniest bubble sometimes with a foam roller, but you can very lightly blow on it and it will dissipate some of the bubbles. But as I said, I am actually sanding in between coats uh, in order to make sure that the paint finish is super, super smooth. There also was a couple of corners that were a bit damaged on this unit so I did actually filler them with some filler and sand it down so that they were nice and smooth and obviously once I've painted that's going to hide that completely and you won't see it at all. Then the other fun job was of course painting the front of the drawers. I was really careful with my foam roller not to go onto the design, obviously I want to keep where I've masked. Uh, completely paint free because that's going to be the lovely wood section so you do want your roller to overlap the masking tape and you also want to make sure that there's plenty paint along that masking tape so that when you peel it off you've got a solid solid line but thin coats are much much better than slapping it all on in one go so I think I did three very light coats uh, with a roller with a sand in between each coat the next thing I did was mark out where my gold dip legs are going to be. So I want maybe a third of the leg um, to be gold dip. So I'm going to make the marks on every leg and mask off the line that I'm going to paint up to and make sure it's the same height and level on all four of the legs. Then I'm going to turn the unit upside down and I'm going to paint uh, two coats of gold up to that line. Again, making sure there's lots of paint up to the line so that the line is nice and crisp and blunt when I peel off that tape. I'm just using a gold Rust-Oleum furniture paint. It has a gorgeous metallic finish and it only needs two coats. I'm not gonna lie, this is one of my favorite bits of any DIY, is peeling off the masking tape to reveal your design. Uh, don't fret if you've had any kind of paint bleeding when you mask out designs like this. I do find that this green frog tape is the best stuff for masking out uh, for any kind of sharp designs. However, you do occasionally get bleeding and all I ever do is use a knife or some scissors really, really gently to scrape off any excess paint and sharpen up your line again. And that works absolutely fine, as long as you're careful. So I wanna jazz up that fake veneer strip and I'm gonna use some of this gold foil sticky back plastic or I think in the US it's called contact paper, but this is a lot thicker than contact paper. It is sort of like a foily metal with a sticky reverse, which you peel off and you apply like you would sticky back plastic. One of the things about this little veneer section was I did like the idea of keeping it, but it did have some areas of damage which were quite bad and quite deep. So I did have to filler them to make it nice and smooth. And what I'm actually gonna do is cover that whole section with some of this foil so that it looks like a metal section of the unit. I'm hoping it's gonna look really, really good. So I've cut a piece approximately to size and I'm gonna line it up Make sure there's an overlap on both sides and I'm gonna smooth it on the whole way along so it's nice and smooth. And then I'm gonna trim off the excess with a little scalpel or you could use a Stanley knife. I 
I did also use a little bit of heat and my towel just to really, really smooth it out and make sure it was perfect. Okay, now this might seem like madness that I've stripped off all of that orange colour and I'm now going to dye it again. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, with a wood dye, dye it back teak. But this will be a nicer, rich brown teak, not so orangey. And I'm not going to be varnishing the unit or any sections of the wood. I'm going to be waxing it and it'll have a lovelier, softer finish than the unit had originally. So you just apply this wood dye with a cloth rub it in along the grain and it just brings out all the colour, all the grain of the wood. And I'm also going to do the same to the unpainted section of the drawers. But in order to protect the painted section, I'm actually now going to reverse the masking effect and put my masking tape along the paint line. So then that means that I can rub my wood dye on there and I'm not got to be worried about getting any on the paint effect tip here is don't press this masking tape on too hard because you don't want it to pull up all of the paint that you've already done press it along the line of the wood just to make sure there's no bleed through but apart from that you're not actually going to have it on there very long as soon as you've applied your wood dye gently peel off the masking tape then you can touch in any sort of sections with your finger nice and neatly and then you can leave it to dry I also added some wood dye to the side of the drawers just to make them look nice and rich and newer and I also added some wood dye to the top edges of the drawers that I masked off and didn't paint. Once everything was completely dry I moved it inside in order to wax it. I'm using the Colron clear wax which is the same one I used on my dining table and I obviously still had some left. I really like it, it's really nice and easy to use. I'm going to apply it with a soft cloth and just buff it into all the areas including all the painted areas. It just helps seal the paint in as well and then I'm going to put two coats of wax on with a little buff in between each coat. I also waxed the front of the drawers, all of the paint and the wood section and I also waxed the inside of the drawers but nowhere that I was going to wallpaper otherwise the wallpaper paste won't stick to the wax. So before I started wallpapering the inside of my drawers and once the wax had all dried, I did actually attach my handles. You can't see them because they are actually countersunk. Top tip is to always check the thread length of your handles that you're replacing just to check that they're either not too long or not too short. So I'm going to wallpaper the inside of my drawers. I've got paste the wall type paste which I've mixed up. The wallpaper is left over from the house I used to live in and it's this gorgeous pink colour, really thick wallpaper with a tree design. It's perfect for a job like this. It'll line the drawers and make the inside really, really hard wearing. So I'm going to paste all inside the drawer. I've already cut the pieces of wallpaper to size and then I'm going to lay them in and it's going to run along the bottom and up onto the fascia of the drawer. I decided to paper my handles in, which will prevent you getting access to the thread and the bolts. However, this unit isn't in daily use by my friends, so I'm not worried that the handles are gonna constantly need tightening or become loose. If you were doing a unit that you use every day, there is a chance you might wanna tighten up the handles. I would still allow yourself access to the drawer bolts, so cut yourself a little hole in the wallpaper. And then I cut the little bit of excess wallpaper off with my knife so it's nice and neat. And I'm gonna repeat on the second drawer. And here it is, all finished. I think it came together beautifully. I love the design on the front. I'm really glad that I left sections of it wood. The gold dip legs tie in really, really well with the metal strip that I applied and the little handles that I got from Amazon, also a perfect gold color. The top came up amazing considering how scratched it was and it now has a lovely soft sheen finish from the wax. So here's a little tour around the whole unit before I take it to my friend's house and surprise her with it. Ah, now 
it's lovely. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure what he was going to do with the top. I didn't know he was going to paint it all or... Oh, it's beautiful. 